What's the deal? This your boy, Mr. Good Buzz. And we got the new merch out, boy. We got the Trico merch. And we got that new merch, boy. Fire up. Man, fire that shit up, man. That's my mans. We got the backwood on the shirt, man. Man, we got hoodies, man. We got shirts. We got cups. We got mugs. Cell phone cases, man. The link is in the description down below. So if you're trying to fuck with your brother and get some of this merch, man, fuck with me. We even got different colors, man. Everything. Let's get it. Okay. Huh. This your boy, Mr. Good Buzz, and we back with the photo booth, boy. And this is weeks four and five. We're gonna be talking about using compost teas growing with organics. So I'm gonna show y'all how to get that down. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. And I'm gonna show y'all how I use the recharge. And follow me on the ground. And we got a new Patreon, man. So let's let's not forget to mention that. Day 22. Now, first of all, let's shout out Mike Jacks. Mike Jacks, boy. We got beats from Mike Jacks, boy, man. Beats fire as fuck, man. If y'all trying to get some beats, man, make sure y'all hit the description down below. Let's get into it, man. This OG Kush Day 22 flower. Bitch is looking pretty. Now, while y'all take a look at that, let me tell y'all something. Next week, we are going to be dropping exclusive content on Patreon only. We doing the auto booth harvest video. Then we dropping a special smoke test video on Patreon only. Make sure y'all hit the link down below in the description. We even got the community chat on Discord. So if you become a patron, you can get special roles in Discord. So make sure y'all hit that link down below in the fucking description. OG is looking good as fuck today though, however. Now, as I already mentioned to y'all, we was gonna run into problems with with the feed because we actually gave him the feed a little bit early because we expected these girls to be a six week strain. Well, of course they are not a six week strain. Comment down below, have y'all ever actually grown a six week strain? Because that's fucking fast as fuck. This week's four and five, so at the end of this, you gonna know for sure like it ain't gonna be ready in a week. So basically we're gonna be playing keep up with these plants. We're gonna be trying to keep up, trying to keep the nutrients rich, trying to make sure they stay fed towards the end of this growth. Now don't get me wrong, the organics is perfect, but something we had to take in consideration, they was getting dry, they was getting regular nutrients. So when I gave them the dry nutrients, I did give them a feed that time, but it's gonna take a while for these organic nutrients to break down in the soil. So we're gonna talk about microbial boosters. Now, no, I am not endorsed by a recharge. Recharge is not the best microbial super pack. There's plenty of them out there. Only reason I'm even talking about recharge is because I used to use one with all the girls. I've been using the organic organism XL, which is pretty much exactly the same shit. But so, for some reason, it clots up and it turns to hard ass rocks and not that fucking long, not that much fucking time. The recharge does have molasses and kelp in it. Um, so both of those are good to feed those microbial life inside the medium. Now they recommend half a teaspoon per gallon, um, but they also say you cannot burn your plants. Obviously you can't burn your plants with fungus and bacteria. That's gonna actually break it down the right way for them and feed it to them when they want it. So I use one tablespoon a gallon or two, one teaspoon a gallon. And this feed right here was only for the amnesia and the OG. Actually, actually the amnesia got noose today. The OG only got a plane, but they got recharged today. So it's always good to have some type of microbial boost uh, just to help break down those nutrients in the soil. Now we gave these girls all these dry nutrients and they're gonna have to, it's gonna take time for them to break that down. So we're gonna drop in the super pack and we're gonna hopefully 
hopefully that's gonna help break down those nutrients a little bit faster and start getting them fed now i'm gonna pay close attention to them um after i give them this recharge i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna be paying close attention because let's see how fast it starts to break down that food and that soil and they start to get fed now as far as ph in this i did check the ph but you do not ph after you add this to your water so the suggestion is the ph first it does make the ph go up so i ph it at 6.5 and then I added that to it and it went up to 7.1. I wasn't aware it was going to make the pH go up like that. But for future reference, we pH the water at 6.0 and then add that and it goes up to 6.5. Really, it don't really matter because the microbial life in the soil is going to uh, is going to regulate the pH for the plant and what's best to uptake what nutrient at what time that the plant needs it. So it really don't matter. I'm just being extra as fuck. All right, day 24. So not nothing much happened today, but let's take a look at the girls a couple days later. Now I'm gonna tell y'all the dribble. I haven't even finished this girl yet, but I believe OG number two to be is gonna become rebound pretty soon. Um, so that's another thing. If you can take a look at the girls, you can see that OG number one on this side is slightly greener than OG Kush number two it's starting to get a lime look to it because it's it's kind of starting to it's starting to pull nutrients from itself and it ain't time to flush and that's probably because it's it's becoming root bound and there's no nutrients for it in the soil it's running out and they haven't started breaking down that that food yet that i put inside the soil so with the down to earth nutrients so it is starting to sap some of his some of his life from itself and out of the leaves so we're gonna have to address this but shit i ain't mad i took a clone of these bitches if she a heavy feeder she gonna get fed heavier But so far, so good, baby. They stacking good. Getting frosty as fuck. Starting to look very, very sparkly. Look at that OG right there. Just relaxing. Spider farmer, man. Link in the description. This bitch going hard. A lot of y'all ask you what I prefer. The HLG or the spider farmer? Well... HLG, I'm not endorsed by them. They light is okay, uh, but they don't really fuck with a nigga for real. A spider farmer going crazy, beautiful customer service, really down to earth people. So I recommend spider farmer. That bitch going hard. Day 28. I mean, they pretty much the exact same light with a different heat sink and cheaper. And the OG cuts looking beautiful. What day did I say today was? I'm not paying no attention, man. Mike Jacks with the beats, boy. So Mike Jacks did did supply the beats for the entire video. Make sure y'all go in the description. Holler at his beat store. Holler at his gram. Your boy, nice. Anybody else trying to get some uh, beats in the videos, man? Hit the gram, man. Message me. I, I fuck with it. Like I already know, man. Niggas running out of beats. Another day in the garden. And at this point, I can smell the OG already. I can always smell it in veg, first of all. But flower, very pungent. Very cush cushy smell like y'all know that kush got that different type of smell it's not like the rest of the loud look the rest of the weed family it's a little different it even grow a little different and if you can see it, the lower canopy this is what i mean now we starting to get a nitrogen deficiency kind of early now plants will go through a nitrogen deficiency in flower especially towards the end of their life cycle but i feel like it's a little early for the plant to be having a nitrogen deficiency the plant is still going to need nitrogen for at least the first three weeks in flower, especially while, during the stretch. So 
I clean up this canopy. I clean up these leaves just so I can see if it's continuing to yellow. And the girl is thirsty today as well. So you can see the droopiness in the leaves. But I'm only getting this yellowing on OG Kush number two, the one that was, the one that was cloned. She a heavy fucking feeder. So I'll reach around, rip all them bitches out. That way, if I see any more yellowing, that means that it's still, it's still feeding on itself. You feel me? So today I decided to give them nutrients and more recharge. Recharge that further help break down that that food so they can start getting fed by these dry nutrients and the new the nutrients to to give them some food because they are starting to starve in this bitch day 30. If y'all ain't catch the autoflower growth, this was the day that the cheese got harvested, baby. Y'all gonna get a beautiful video, a beautiful harvest dry cure yield video next week with the exclusive smoke video on Patreon only. And of course you get 24 seven growth support. If you trying to have me look at your growth, trying to have me go every step of the way with you, you can do that on Patreon, do direct messages. Through, through direct messages. Kinda stumbled up on that shit. Wait till y'all see what we yielded off that bitch. And after yielding off that, I can't wait to see what we yield from the photo booth. Now this is photo period. Now we do get the real yield from the photos because they're trained more top sites, as many as we can get for the amount of light and space that we have. So we gonna get the maximum yield from this, from the Spider Farmer SF 2000. So if y'all trying to see how good this light is, man, make sure y'all follow the rest of this series. Day 32. So just slight yellowing, just a little bit, but we keeping up. Now when your plant starts to become root bound, it is still possible to keep up with the feed. All you have to do is feed it more often. We gave it heavier feed, give it more water, more often, and she'll keep up. She'll drink the shit out there shit real fast, but and it's gonna keep your ass busy, but she not gonna die, and she not gonna experience too many deficiencies. It's a lot of it's a lot of argument out there that you can't that plants cannot become root bound. It's an interesting argument. I mean, of course they can become root bound and, and it becomes very difficult for you, but uh it is possible to still keep the plant thriving while it's root bound. And a lot of people will argue that and there's a lot of videos on that, so I'll check it out. But I don't want that shit. I would rather them not be root bound. I'm not trying to water and feed this plant every fucking day. So pungent in here. It, it almost smells just like the cheese, but not funky. More, more berry flavor to it. Less funk, more berry but very pungent. Kind of like a diesel. All right, so let's talk about making compost tea. Now, as part of my organic regimen, we will do compost teas once a week during flower, along with the dry amendment. So we basically tailor our dry amendments to what we want. And I'm gonna use this mix and you can take a look what's in the mix. Those are the ingredients. And then we got a couple single ingredients. For the nitrogen deficiency, we're gonna use some of this bad guano with seven, with uh, reading the seven nitrogen. Then we're gonna use bone meal, of course, cause we're in flour. So we got 15 on the phosphorus. 
and then of course the back guano and the 44 the 4a4 mix is going to supply that phosphorus i mean that potassium we're going to use recharge and we're going to use black strap molasses and that's going to help feed that that microbial life now the compost tea is you're going to need compost to make a compost tea now i've been making the tea with the last grow without compost and i don't know i'm not sure how well it works i brewed the regular feeds um it wasn't even dry nutrients so basically we got the molasses in the water i forgot to get the clip but i use one tablespoon of molasses per gallon or i think that's what i use pretty fucking sure and get your worm casters and this is gonna provide that microbial life and this shit is sticky and it's worm shit so don't eat it And I use one cup of worm castings per gallon of water. Now we only making this compost tea for the OG Kush. It's only two gallons of water. So we not using, this is kind of a very small tea. Uh, we didn't fill the bucket up to five gallons. So two cups castings. And we're gonna use two tablespoons of each amendment. So the 4A4, we're gonna get two tablespoons of the 4A4. And basically tailor these these compost teas to what your plants need during the time that they need it. If they was in veg, I wouldn't be using bone meal. I probably would have used blood meal or something with like 14, uh, the one with like 14 nitrogen or something like that. I was using two teaspoons. Should I have used tablespoons? Now, when I made this video, I probably would have used I, unknowingly I didn't use as much as I would have used in dry amendments um, it does take a lot of dry amendments to to raise those ppms in the, in the solution but whatever I did it turned out great because the plants are still thriving today in real life so I don't think too much into it and the bone meal. So this should provide all the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that these girls need. Plus the recharge that's gonna help break down that microbial life. I'm feeling good about this girl, y'all. I'm feeling real good about it. Gotta look and listen to your plants. Listen to what they need. They gonna tell you, they gonna be like, daddy, we need this. And you gotta be able to hear it when they need it. You feel me? Or them bitches gonna die. Actually, they kind of hard to kill. They don't die that easily. All right, then the recharge. So we're gonna use the same amount of recharge. Uh, two teaspoons per gallon of water. Same thing that we use when we actually mix it into the water. Now, when this recharge shit gets wet, it stains the fuck out of shit. Just a heads up. And the recharge, these microbial boost packs are expensive. This little pack was like $30. But it go a long way, though. I think the pound of the Organism XL is like $60 or something. Roots are going to be taxing. All right, now that you got it in your cheesecloth. Now the nutrients do kind of go through the cheesecloth just a little bit. So I try not to spill it all over the place. So I just kind of massage the shit and kind of mix it up. Keep it from falling out the cloth. And then go ahead and pull the drawstring. And it's ready to brew, baby. Let's get it. Now, this what this bag was, if this water was filled all the way to the top, I would have hung the bag over the side um, like most people do. But unfortunately, this is a tiny ass tea. 
So make sure you got you some, a good aerator. This one is not that great. So you will see that I added another one to it because it wasn't bubbling as nicely as I liked it, as I wanted it to. And voila, that's it. And so leave it for 24 to 48 hours and we will be back. And put your air pump on top. Keep it from getting damaged by the water. Day 34. And it looks like we have successfully slowed down the yellow one. Thirsty again, ain't y'all? Like I said, all the signs leading to this girl is root bound. Thirsty as fuck every time. Even though I give her extra water. And OG quiz number two kind of like, it overall had better health, I ain't gonna lie. I kind of wish we had clone number two or OG number one instead of number two. Because this girl, I had no issues out of number one the entire grow. Like, she was never thirsty, never nutrient deficient. I mean, she went ham the whole time. Look at number two, thirsty as fuck. OG Kush number one, leaves pointed up to the sky, looking healthy. But OG Kush went through, number two went through a lot. She got cloned, lollipop the fuck out of her. She grew super close to the light, got a little, a little light stress up there. She went through it, man. Let's see what she do. She still seem to be doing good. So it was a little less than 48 hours later. Now I know all compost teas don't bubble a whole lot. This one didn't. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I'm not, I don't understand why. This one didn't bubble as much. But that don't mean a damn thing. Squeeze out your tea bag. Get all that, all that extra water. That's the shit with the nutrients. That's the PPMs in there. And I do mix up the brew. I stir it up just to make sure it's straight. Get all that shit water. And this shit smell like shit, I ain't gonna lie. It smell like horse shit. And now what I like to do is take the scraps, that's what I call it, the scraps. The worm casting mixed with all the nutrients that I gave them. Squishy, nasty shit, look at this. Ugh. Ugh. I feel like I'm putting my hands in shit. Ugh. And I just spread that around, along the top. It, it's so sticky to my hands, I can't even spread it out. It's so nasty. It's literally, it's literally shit. Yeah. Shit messy as hell. Y'all should see my face while I'm even recording the voiceover. Like, ugh. Hey man, growing cannabis is fun, man. It's ups and downs. It's, it's certainly an experience. I'll tell you one thing, man. I was always an impatient nigga. And growing plants has taught me to be a lot more patient. I don't have the best patience, but you definitely gotta be patient with the plants, with your girls. The only thing that make them grow is time and love. And then I just water that gross shit in. Now it actually breaks down into the soil very well. Like the next day you won't even see that shit. And the compost tea is, is great for boosting microbial life. Especially when you give it the scraps. All right, day 35. Oh, we almost up out of here, ain't we? Huh? HLG 260, baby. How you think we did with it? Comment down below, man. We got 
two more videos of, well like two or three more videos of the photo booth then we got the yield coming man big things to come man patreon going crazy man and you can see right here that we starting to get a little bit more lime green a little bit more yellow and so gotta keep an eye on this girl man so far so good though they still bud production is still equal across both sides both plants bud production looking equal so we got to be diligent with this shit the fact that we decided to give it dry nutrients i didn't really mention to y'all before but a big part of the deciding factor of giving them dry nutrients is because i ran out of liquid nutrients the roots organic shit man the last girl ran out and i really didn't plan on buying shit else and you know what i'm a cheap ass nigga i'm not about to buy shit so we're gonna just ride it out you feel me remember back in the day people used to grow plants outside in the shrubs niggas putting you could grow a whole plant i seen a whole plant growing up under a regular ass light bulb so we don't have to over complicate it i appreciate y'all joining me man make sure y'all comment down below y'all like this video and y'all subscribe make sure y'all fuck with my patreon now we do got some big shit happening soon we doing another giveaway for the 10,000 subs so i'm gonna keep that on the hush for another couple weeks but patreon will get 50 entries to that contest make sure y'all stay tuned man i appreciate y'all man fuck with me